What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're here with a really exciting video. As so many people have asked, this is our first look and review with the FlightScope Mevo Plus and the all new face impact location. So we just actually activated our license and we've been messing around with this a little bit. And let me tell you, I'm very impressed, but there are a lot of things I want to go over in this video. I'm going to go over setup and we're going to talk about lighting and things. I've had a lot of people reach out since this was initially released. It's only been about a day so far. And I'm going to go over some of those things that are very important for you guys to understand. That way, you know, this is working properly. And I'm going to show you kind of some tips and tricks on how to get this set up and calibrated. So First thing first, I'm connected to my iPad. And before I get started, I wanna make sure if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please do like the video, comment below, questions, thoughts, all that. But most importantly, if you're looking to purchase a FlightScope Mevo Plus or any of the add-ons, make sure you shoot me an email. I have an exclusive discount code for the channel. I wanna make sure you guys are using that and saving the most amount of money. So go ahead and shoot me an email. I actually put the discount code in the description and the, I'll pin it to the top of the comments as well, make it easy for you guys. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna go over over to my iPad that I'm using really quick. I have it hooked up to my projector. Um, I like using the iPad software. I am messing with the PC software right now. Um, I will be doing a full review of that in the future, but I felt comfortable with the PC software. Or I'm sorry, the iPad software. I wanted to show you guys all this. So if I go up into the settings really quick, I just want to show you guys the radar settings. Um, so radar setup, um, we are seven feet to the ball and I have everything else all aligned and level and good to go. Um, if I go to setup verification, this is something you guys are gonna wanna do right away. So you're gonna place your ball and when you start your session, it's going to prompt you through these things. Um, but you just want to make sure it's set to iron, which I have in my hand right now. And then you'll see it says uh, face impact location. And then it also allows you to see if you have any horizontal offset. But let's just go ahead. doesn't matter what the shot is. Just take a simple shot. And it's going to show you how far off of center. I placed that ball dead center on my mat, and it's dead center from the Mevo Plus. But notice how it says face impact location data available. Well, that's because I have a well-lit hitting area. This is what's going to matter is this hitting area. And I know that some people kind of use that harsh pin spot I've seen. I'm not a big fan of that. I kind of like the glowing light. It gives you a little more ambient light. And when we're talking about cameras and stuff like that, I believe that they're going to they're going to like the ambient light. It allows that sensor to kind of absorb some more lighting. So something to keep in mind. Now, in my direct hitting area right here, I'm actually north of a thousand lumens. And that sounds like a lot based on flight scope saying that the bare minimum is 300 lumens. But like I said, if you want the optimal performance, a thousand lumens, believe it or not, is not much. A couple nice bulbs right above. I have a couple mini halogens right above me. Um, make sure that they're video quality. That way there's no flickering and slow motion video. Um, and I can answer any of those questions for you if you want, shoot me an email. Um, but that way, you know, you're going to have the optimal setup here. Now, Let's go into our session and we're going to talk about calibration. This is another very important part for your impact location. All right, so you're here in your session. All right, now this is what I'm going to use. You can use foot spray if you want. I've talked to a lot of people and there are actually a surprising number of people that have tested foot spray in golf simulators and they said they don't really see any residue or anything on their screen. So proceed with caution, whatever works for you. But I have these little stickers I bought on Amazon. I can put a link to these down in the description as well. I actually like them. Um, are they perfect? No, and I'll tell you why. Um, I'm just going to place this on the face really quick. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's just going to be showing me where the ball's hitting. So it's not like it has to be like perfectly level or anything like that. Um, you can see how I placed it on there. Now it does have these little markings that shows you it's kind of cool, uh, you know, where draw spin would be or fade spin would be if you're hitting, you know, with gear effect. And then the distance reduction, uh, depending on what quadrant you're hitting on the face. So you actually lose distance if you're not in the center of the club, as most of you know. Um, but this is going to give us an idea if we need to adjust our club inside of the settings. Now it allows you to do a very simple calibration. I'm going to show you, and I think that's all you're going to need to do. Now, if you want to measure your club, it also allows you to put those measurements in there as well. There's a lot of different clubs out in the market. So it may be something that you want to do for that optimal, uh, accuracy of this face impact location, but let's go ahead and hit a shot really quick. <laughs> Not bad for the first warm up shot of the day. It was a tiny bit toe bound and center of the face for the most part. So you can see where that, that marking is. Make sure I get that nice and close for you guys so you can see it. 
See that blue marking right there? And now we're gonna go over to our iPad. And I can actually bring it back up for you guys so we can compare. So let's look at my screen right here, all right? And then up there. Now I am seeing basically a perfect match. I mean, it just did an excellent job. I'm not even going to mess with the calibration on this because it did just such a good job of where that is. Now, could I measure exactly what line it is? I mean, there's one, two, three. I mean, it's right below the third. So I mean, if you look at the third, that's the top of the ball. I mean, that's where I would want it. So um, it did an excellent job right out of the gate. Now, here's the one thing about these stickers. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the camera or not, but it actually leaves some of the ink residue for those, you know, what I considered kind of cool data that they put on there. Um, so I actually wipe it off and I'm gonna take the stickers off after we know we have everything going well, but I just wipe it off because I don't want to get it on my screen. Um, so, you know, do what's best for you, but let's go ahead and hit another shot. <clears throat> All right, that was kind of a, a warm up swing. Um, we'll try to hit maybe a full blown eight iron shot now. There we go. That's my normal, you know, carry 150, 155 as I'm getting warmed up. Um, good spin. Now notice it's doing a very good job with spin. This paper is probably affecting that spin a little bit. So I, I find that pretty interesting um, that you're going to, and let me pull up the impact again, that you're going to use these to test, but then you're really going to want to remove them because it could be affecting your spin data and everything. So this is just to test and calibrate. And once it's calibrated, you're good to go. All right. I'm going to bring this back over here so you guys compare what's on this uh, compare what's on the screen and what's here so we know at this stage that this is just doing an excellent job of tracking impact compared to what i see there i mean look at the bottom line and the bottom line of the ball and look at where it is in correlation to the left uh you know here's the edge and then there's the edge of the ball um and i'll try to get those as close as i can you guys were able to see both of those before there we go um, very, very impressive. All right, so we'll go back out. I'm gonna hit one more. All right, I've been working on these little fades and uh, you know, I'm really, really happy with, with what I've done. I've moved the ball up in my stance a little bit, um, opened my stance up a little bit, getting the club moving a little bit to the left and it's really changed a, a lot for me. A um, little lesson I took from my local PGA instructor. I suggest you get a lesson as well if you're trying to change your swing around a little bit. But let's take one more. This is going to give us a grouping that I'm gonna show you guys. All right. Now that's funny. Looks like I hit that one just a tad lower. So let's go ahead and pull that up. All right. And notice how I'm going to club analysis and then up in the upper right, you'll see where it says face impact. So here we go. There's our marking right there. Kind of tough to see as it kind of started getting blurred, but to the left and down, I mean, that is, uh, that's really, really good for three shots. Um, you guys tell me your opinion. I'm sorry about the blob and I can try to maybe, I could hit one more maybe and try to hit it toe bound so it's not, uh, not so, you know, I don't want to call it smudged over there where I hit two like so close together. Let's see if I can hit one kind of off the toe. Um, one was pretty, pretty close to the toe. Let's go ahead and try to hit one more. Even if it's a huge miss hit, at least I'll try, maybe I'll try staying a little further away. Try to line up and hit this off the toe. Maybe a little thin too. All right, so I accomplished the thin, but I don't think I accomplished... Yeah, I mean, that thing was, let's see if it will read that. This is actually perfect. That was about as thin as it gets. See the top half of the ball? Let's uh, pull it up real quick for you. Man, if it picks that up, I'll be, wow. It did a really good job. So look at that. So here's like the top half of the ball. And then remember, it's tough to look at the sticker. There's still more club down at the bottom here. So pay attention to how much ball's there. There's just a little bit of the ball that would have been below the club. And then look at the thin shot up there. So even with just real simple, I mean, not picky calibration, 
I was able to get all of these results. Uh, now, if you wanted to hone it in and, and do more shots and be able to, uh, you know, really, you know, fine tune everything, you can do that. Um, but I mean, really with that first shot, all I had to do is, is just make sure it was in line. I didn't even touch it. And then I was good to go from there. Um, but you may find that different depending on your club size and everything. I'm going to show you guys all that right now. So let's go back up. Let's go to club analysis. And then there's a couple cool things I want to show you guys in here. So one that we've over on the left, see how it says map. That is the heat map of all my shots. So it's really cool to see that. And you can also hit all shots and that's going to show you all of the dots. So that's every single impact, what we just hit. So some really cool stuff you can do there. And then when you're back into the cal uh, calibrate screen, see where it says adjust in the upper right. If you click adjust, let's go to understand. This is where you can actually input the width and the height of your head. So see those at the bottom, how it's four inches and two inches, standard dimensions. You can actually adjust those by measuring your club face and club head and then hitting save. All right, so just wanted you guys to, uh, you know, know that all of that is available in there. Um, you know, so we can actually exit out of calibrate. Um, but this all shots where you can see the dots and then the map as well. I just think that's really cool stuff. I mean, very, very powerful the way that they're, uh, you know, displaying all this information. Now you could also go to the 3d, uh, you know, club plane, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have already seen. There's a, a 2d model. All right. Where you can see face to target and club path. You can see face to path. You can see dynamic loft. You can see spin axis. All right. All of the graphical information that they have available um, when you have the pro package and you also have this face impact. Uh, I just think that it's, it's really powerful stuff. And then when you're in 3d, you can also go down to the bottom here and you can look at top view. You can look at angle of attack. All right. Vertical plane, um, all of this, um, really, really cool. And then notice how it even lets you play the actual graphical representation. And it's amazing. It even lets you do all shots. So I actually have not messed with that before to where I've seen that it lets you do that, but really cool. So let's say someone is trying to understand, you know, how that's working. I mean, there's that path. All right. And then there's that horizontal plane and everything. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really cool what they've done with this. This is all, all being done on an iPad, which I, I find, you know, very impressive. And then of course you have your, your dashboard of data that you can look at, you know, your tables of data, all that's there. Um, video, video is really cool. So if you had the radar camera actually on, um, you know, you can, and I'll see if I can actually See, I have advanced fusion mode on. So with advanced fusion mode, I don't think that they allow you to use the camera internally when you're using advanced fusion, um, which I would recommend. Hook up an iPhone or something like that if you want, but you could preview that video right inside of here as well. All right. Um, but I think this is a, a perfect first look and review and talking about what's important for you guys when you're going to be considering or using your face impact data with FlightScope Mevo Plus. I haven't even had this license activated for, you know, more than, I don't even know, it's been like an hour or something like that. And uh, I can already see that I'm getting excellent results. I'm definitely going to pay attention to my calibration. And if I need to measure my clubs, I will, because I know that's what I'm gonna be using moving forward or you can just do simple calibration and obviously get some fantastic results as I showed you today. Um, I'd be interested to know what people think if they're using stickers or if they're using foot spray. Um, I don't think foot spray is anything to really worry about based on everyone I've talked to. You know, it's very minimal that could be going up on your screen. Um, you know, I just want everyone to proceed with caution. I don't want somebody using, don't use one with like antifungal and stuff like that. Cause I think that would be unnecessary uh, additional chemicals and things that, you know, potentially could mark up your screen. So some important things that you want to pay attention to, but um, I'm really excited. I mean, FlightScope Mevo Plus adding all this data. I, I, we did our first look preview at the PGA show with Alex. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, it was pretty cool representation of all this as well but now we're in the gsv studio we know that we have normal lighting this isn't anything crazy and it's it's working great so i'd love to know what you guys think make sure you comment below and like i said make sure you hit me up or use that discount code that i have both in the description and uh, pinned to the top of the comments as always i appreciate you guys watching stay tuned there'll be a lot more coming soon